Well, hello there. This is Donna Reiners. And uh, welcome to a new day with Donna May. How are y'all today? It's around 4.40 p.m. It's a beautiful day. And I'm here because I have a confession. A confession of the judgment zone. Let me explain what I mean. So I'm at the post office, basically minding my own business at the post office. Truly, doing my best to mind my own business at the post office. Look, I just went in to get these. That's really, that's really all I went in for. I didn't go in to be nosy. I didn't go in to get anybody's business. I didn't go in to hear what was going on in other people's lives. It's just not my business. However, on the exit from the post office, I noticed a young mom with three children. One, which was maybe eight years old, um, that had a shaving upon him that really seriously reminded me of some kind of gang mark. Now, listen. That's not my jam. So, that's not my business. And maybe it wasn't gang mark. Maybe she shaved him herself and she just kind of missed and ended up making some of those little markings. I don't really know. However, I named this a judgment zone because, because as I was leaving, she was screaming at her children, specifically at the eight or so year old. And I know he's about that age because with Daniel Naomi Contreras, and kind of bringing up those kids with them, that's what size he looked like when he was eight. He's 11 now. So I think I called it. I'm not good at that, but I think I called it. So the little eight-year-old or so with the interesting markings on his head, she's screaming at him publicly. And she is yelling at him, would you like to know what she's yelling? Oh, she's yelling, don't you want to open the door for your mama? Like, wow. <laughs> that would make me want to open the door for my mama. It would. I would rush to open the door for my mother. No, I wouldn't. Listen, she was yelling at him very unkindly. And so, what does Donna want to do? Well... Donna wants to slap her mouth, honestly. Donna wants to wash her mouth out with soap. Donna wants to tell Mama that you don't talk to kids like that, right? And then I got to thinking, what could it be that all those markings on his head was for her, from her punching him in the head? Because that's what it seemed like. Anyway, long story short, or long, I don't know yet, because this is kind of impromptu, because you know how I am. The thing is that... As she's yelling at him, and she continues to let it yell at him, and I hear her yell at him all the way to get to my car, all about, don't you want to open the door for your mama, and trying to tell him how to open the door for her, as I'm judging her myself, because I'm talking about me being the judgment zone, I'm just being straight, I thought, first of all, I want to slap her mouth, secondly, I want to wipe her mouth out with lava. Thirdly, I want to hug that kid for feeling so condemned by his mama because he doesn't know how to open the door. This is what I figure. She wants him to open the door, but you know what I think? I don't think that she's ever had the door open for her. And I don't think she knew how to explain to him how to open the door for a lady. Well, clearly she wasn't acting like a lady, but that's probably another video. And so this is the thing, yelling and screaming, at your kid, commanding them to do something for you is probably not going to cause that child to want to do something for you. Now, it might cause them to be so freaking afraid of you that they have to do it for you so that you don't thump them and so the crazy lady who's watch watching them doesn't want to go wash her mouth out with soap or slap her across the face. So I just want to encourage y'all today that I turned into the judgment zone. And this is what I mean. I was thinking to myself, I just want to slap her across the face. 
And then I was thinking to myself, if I had some lava, I would put it in her mouth. And then I was thinking to myself, that's not very kind, Donna. That's not very loving, Donna. And then I just started seeing how she is so unloved. And she has not been properly loved. And this is how she's been treated. And this is how she's been taught. And this is how she was brought up. And so that's all she had to give. Was her heart in the right place? More than likely, more than likely she would like to be treated like a lady. And more than likely she would like, she would like her children to treat other ladies like a lady. It's unfortunate that this mama did not know how to relay that from a place of love. Why? Because of people like me who judged the crap out of her, just, just wanted to slap her across the face. For, for, I just wanted to just grab a hold of her. And then God's like, Donna, hello, Donna, hello, Donna. She just lacks love. So I'm confessing to you that today I, <coughs> I was a judgment zone. <coughs> and I did turn. And I am blessing her. And I'm realizing she's in need of somebody to love her. She's in need of somebody to show her. She's in need of somebody to open the door for her in a kind way. Because I have a feeling she hasn't been treated like a lady in a really, <coughs> really, really long time, if ever. So I changed my mind about my judgment. And I decided, you know, as much as I know about walking out life with blessings, walking out life curses, walking out life in such a manner because we impact our environment and we impact our atmosphere. I changed my mind about impacting her atmosphere with intentionality in a negative way. And I said, God, bless her. God, treat her like a lady. God, show her how to love her son. God, show this family that you love them and where she has been hurt and where she has been abused and where she has been misunderstood and where she is just attempting to help her kid be kind to a lady, even though she's doing it all wrong. I said, God bless her heart, the desires for her children to be treated differently from, than her. Although, bless her heart, the problem is you only give out who you are. And right now she's a hurt, abused woman who doesn't know how to love because she hadn't been loved. You got something to say? I just thought, what the hey? This is Jen. See what you got to say. Hello. I did not witness this moment because I was waiting in the vehicle. <laughs> um, I think I'm agreeing with what Donna is saying based on the description of the scene. I would just add that I think that sometimes people can have a tendency to, to project guilt onto other people when they have a lack. So just like this lady probably was missing a revelation of love or she wasn't treated well or or maybe somebody really has done her wrong recently. Um, or it could be because somebody she carried for a long time, who knows. But um, rather than taking time and saying, hey, uh, let's go ahead and, and do this in a, in a healthy way and raise my son the way you know he can make a difference where I didn't have it. It's like all the woundedness and all the yuck and all the hurt and all that comes out in the guilt, like guilting someone into doing that. And sometimes that can manifest in making these internal vows. And what is a vow? An action plan. This is if you hear yourself or someone that you know <laughs> continuously saying, you always and you never. And um, you're not ever gonna either. And every time, nah, 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 it's often an always and never statements. Yes. And we often exaggerate and we often... Uh, just jump to the most extreme thing because the emotions are so mm -hmm. in a rile like I want to slap that woman across the face that was pretty much close to a curse which I repented of and pulled off of her and so I didn't do that however <laughs> it is very interesting um, the dynamics of you just think you're just tooling along in your life and all of a sudden um, drama 
comes around and all of a sudden just like that you react just like that and it's like heightened act heightened emotion heightened frequency and all of a sudden you're at heightened emotion and, heightened and frequency. you don't realize that that drama just turned into a trauma mm -hmm. for you it, it reminds me of I used to go to this particular water park where you'd ride on these little inner tubes and there was these certain sections where you're just floating along and it kind of just like coasts you like a little river and then there'd be these little whirlpools off to the side and you would be like no no like hold, grab your friend or whoever you're with like hold on to my tube I'm going over to the little whirlpool because you just want to stay on the little the little river um, but once you get stuck in one of those things sometimes it's hard to get back out and people can get separated it's just crazy but that's what i was just picturing like going along just minding your own business or so you think and instead of like well that's a weird scene hmm and looking at things very objectively instantly your thermometer is up here matching what they're doing and it just kind of clashes and normally what we do as faith-based people we justify and say well that was righteous anger no i was just pissed off that's not righteous do I want those children to be treated differently? Absolutely. But my initial reaction was not from the place of righteousness. My initial reaction was, I want to wash that woman's mouth out with soap. But God, in his faithfulness, what did he do for me? He convicted me with righteousness. He poured righteousness on, front, on top of me. You know how I know the difference? Because it turned me into someone that was loving her and pouring life into her and pouring life into those kids versus what she was giving out which was unrighteousness and great anger because of what she's been going through and how she feels hurt and how she feels abused so I just want to encourage y'all today when you witness something that makes you mad or makes you sad or hurts your heart stop and go wait God what's really happening and let God give you let God give you an action plan for that situation let God give you an action plan for that woman who you know has been abused has not been loved has no idea what she's doing is pouring out guilt and condemnation on her kids or her family or whatever you can pour out just the opposite because God doesn't convict with guilt he doesn't convict like that no 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 our beautiful father convicts us with righteousness he convicts us with peace he convicts us with joy and it becomes the presence and the atmosphere of the Holy Spirit and we get to pour life out on people who are pouring out death I bless you today you're awesome may the Lord God himself show you his great love for you and it will come from a place of righteousness every time until soon this is Donna Bye. and Jen <laughs> <laughs>